You know, it's really interesting. Coming into the session, the fear and greed index has slipped into neutral, which is right here at 50. And what's really crazy about this, just one month ago, we were at extreme greed. So we, we've gone from here to there. I got to be honest, it doesn't feel that way. But my next guest says the biggest risk facing these markets, uh, is particularly during our earnings season, is investor enthusiasm running ahead of fundamentals. I want to bring in now Crescent, the chief, Crescent Chief Investment Officer, uh, uh, founding partner, Jack Ablin. And Jack, I've got a chart here, one of your charts here to kind of explain uh, sort of that stuff. But before we get to, to this, um, th this, this enthusiasm, this over-enthusiasm, isn't that part and parcel almost all the time, anytime the market starts to run like this? It is. You know, I think enthusiasm and momentum feeds on itself. Good news begets more good news. And then everyone starts looking for, uh, you know, opportunities to get in. Absolutely. So there is certainly an element of that. Uh, that you point out, yeah. The the, the concern here uh, with respect to, to uh, we've got, again, we've got one of your charts up here. Are you looking for potentially a near-term miss or hiccup on earnings? No, not necessarily. I mean, the problem is the expectations right now uh, built into the market are pretty high. If you consider, you know, as, as you were talking about earlier, we started the year at five or six rate cut expectations. We're now down to two or three. Um, meanwhile, the market's up 10% anyway. Bonds, oil up, suggesting we've got higher growth, higher uh, inflation expectations. And so it's sort of like on one side of the aisle, we've got oil and we've got interest rates. And on the other side of the aisle, we've got gold and we've got uh, equities. You know, they want to, they're, they're expecting lower rates and they're rallying in anticipation right. of that. And of course, higher rates and higher oil prices are on the other side of it. Right. And so I do think that expectations for earnings are probably a little bit high and they may come through. Uh, and that's what I'm hopeful will happen. All right. And we'll break it down here a little bit because uh, you've got, of course, you've got the, the NASDAQ 100, which is a lot of these tech names trading at a much higher multiple than the S&P 500. But it feels like these mega cap tech names, it's hard to see them missing, right? So if anything, right. we can see the, the bifurcation in this market that so many people fretted about last year, it could be the case going forward after this earnings season as well. It could be. In fact, you know, I will say, and, I've, and I think I've, I've been on your show before saying, I don't believe there's a tech bubble. I, I don't think that we're anywhere near a tech bubble because all of the earnings in the S&P are fueled by the MAG-7, essentially. In fact, if you strip away this quarter's earnings expectations, out of the from the from the S and P out of the Mag Seven, the the rest of the S and P would be down uh, year over year earnings. So uh, I think that we need that Mag Seven to continue to push uh, the the earnings higher near term. And then what it looks like as we navigate the end of the year, the Mag Seven will have a smaller impact on earnings growth, and then the S and P. Kind of what we'll call 493, right. we'll start pushing a little bit higher. So between now and then, though, another part that you brought up that is, is worth sharing with the audience is uh, if earnings aren't going to be the thing that propels the 493 right now. It's got to be Fed rate cuts. We show the relative, we show, uh, you know, equal weight uh, market. This is one of your great charts. So we've got the equal weight coming down on the, uh, along with the probability uh, of rate cuts uh, com coming down. It's, it's, I mean, if we start to go to two rate cuts, one rate cut, then there's nothing really there to get the rest of the market going, is there? No, we just keep pushing it off and pushing it off. I think that, uh, you know, that's where uh, it's, you know, we're, we're a little concerned because I think we're, everyone's ready for this rotation. I'm certainly ready for it. I love <laughs> uh, some of the other, you know, smaller names, dividend-oriented stocks, REITs, things like that. But we need lower overnight rates to really help that push happen. And right now, now we're down to three or potentially two. Uh, sure, we may get some next year, but eventually, uh, you know, that will come through. But, you know, we may be putting it off six months uh, or even longer. Yeah, I started to show, uh, you know, going over the fact that one week small caps look great. And then very next week, they give it all back. And it's certainly very frustrating because from a valuation point of view, they feel like a slam dunk. Uh, I got just 30 seconds. I want to share with the audience some of your uh, dividend ideas. Uh, Chevron trading with got a 4% yield, Chubb with a 1.4% yield, IBM 3.5% yield. This IBM is really intriguing because it's starting to become an AI favorite as well. 
That's it. And not only that, I think their uh, dividend uh, is expected to grow at like 10 percentage points over the next three or four years. So um, I do think that uh, IBM could be that uh, secret, va quote unquote, value play within the tech space uh, that can benefit from this AI theme as well. Wow. A twofer. Hey, Jack, thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you.